estimate in our own mind. Um, it's a number with a 10 with seven, 17 zeros behind it. It's just a massive, massive number. And the analogy that he used to kind of give us a little bit of perspective, Texas is a big state, right? So say that you had a quarter and you were given the opportunity to hide it anywhere in the state of Texas that you wanted to, and then you were going to go ask your friend to find it. So you go out there and you put it somewhere, you hide it. Even if it was just the state as it is, that would be a pretty difficult thing to do. Would you agree? So now imagine God dumping enough quarters to fill up the state of Texas up to about your waist all the way through the entire state and say, go fishing, right? This is the kind of odds that we're talking about, finding a quarter, not just a needle in a haystack. I mean, you're talking about finding a quarter in the state of Texas when there's this many quarters up to your waist. That's the kind of odds that it would take to fulfill all of those things in the life of one man. So when you add these kinds of evidences together, man, it, it starts to be drawing a very compelling argument that the Bible itself is true and inspired and can bring hope. And who does it point to? The Bible ultimately points to one person. It points to Jesus Christ, the one who died on a cross and rose again that we might have life. It's God's love story to you and I. Let's take a quick look. I've asked our friend to, to share with us just a few of those biblical prophecies and what they ended up resulting in in the New Testament as well. May it inspire you and build your faith today. Prophesied in Isaiah 7 that Jesus would be born of a virgin. The virgin will be with child and give birth to a son. And in Matthew 1, it was fulfilled. Micah chapter 5 prophesied that Jesus would be born in Bethlehem. And it was fulfilled in Matthew 2. Isaiah 11 said Jesus would be anointed by the Spirit. It was fulfilled in Matthew chapter 3. See, your king comes to you, righteous and having salvation, gentle and riding on a donkey. In John 12, it was so. Psalm 41 said Jesus would be betrayed by a friend. Even my close friend, whom I trusted, has lifted his heel against me. And in the 26th chapter of Matthew, this prophecy was fulfilled. Now the betrayer had arranged a signal with them. The one I kiss is the man, arrest him. Going at once to Jesus, Judas said, greetings, Rabbi, and kissed him. The Old Testament said Jesus would be silent before his accusers. And the New Testament showed this prophecy to come true. Isaiah 50 said that Jesus would one day be beaten and spat upon. Matthew 26 showed this horrible prophecy coming true. Concerning Jesus, Psalm 22 said they would one day cast lots for his clothing. And in John 19, it was fulfilled.
Psalm 118 showed that one day he would rise again. I will not die, but live, and will proclaim what the Lord has done. The Lord has chastened me severely, but he has not given me over to death. And Mark chapter 16 shows that's exactly what he did. evidence tells us that the Bible is reliable, that we can have great confidence in what we read. For those who believe, that is great news. It's something to be cherished. It's something that we should um, just use to let us fall in love with Christ all over again, that we should be deep within his word, that we should never take it for granted because it truly is the inspired word of God that is living and breathing and active and still has the ability to change our lives. If you're here today and you're exploring your faith, the faith in Jesus Christ, and you're, I hope that you've come away understanding that, man, there is this God who came from heaven to earth. The Bible says that you are a sinner in need of a Savior, and that it's by His blood that was shed on a cross that we receive forgiveness for our sins. There's nothing that you or I could do of our own works to make it to heaven. None of us are righteous. We are all sinners, and sin can't stand in the face of God. And when we get to heaven, there's only going to really be one question that you're going to be asked. It's going to be, who do you say that Jesus is? And if your proper response is that Jesus is the Son of the living God, He died on my behalf so that I could be forgiven, so that I could be set free, so that I could live in eternity with God the Father, that is the proper response. If you get there and you say, I wasn't so bad, guess what? You are in trouble, right? This is what the Bible says. It is reliable. It is true. Would you bow your heads and close your eyes for just a moment? If you're here today, I suspect that in your past, sometimes somebody's been praying for you. They've been believing, God, that you would come to know Jesus as your Lord and Savior. And today just might be the day that you're saying, man, I'm going to turn my life over to him. I love him. I need him. I see my sinfulness. And I see his righteousness, and it's compelling me to just turn my life over to him, to live for him from this moment forward, to, to seek forgiveness of my sins. My Aunt Gail and Uncle Rick did for me when I was 11. They prayed for me. They handed me that Bible, and some 10 years later, I gave my life to the Lord. I hope for some of you today, your 10 years later is today. If you're here today and you just sense a tugging in your heart, maybe some butterflies in your heart that God's speaking to you today, and that he's telling you it's time to turn your life over to him, if that's you this morning, I'd ask you to do something for me. Would you raise your hand up real high? I would love to pray for you right where you're at. If you want to make a decision to turn your life over to him, if that's you, do it now. Love to pray for you right where you're at. I see your hand, ma'am. Anyone else today? Would everybody just stand with me today? Praise God. Commend you on your decision this morning. Let's all just pray as a reaffirmation of our faith or for the very first time. What I would encourage you to do after the service is the young lady who raised her hand, I'd love for you to come up. I'd love to personally hand you this Bible and put it into your hand and help you start your walk off with faith in a great way. If you don't have a Bible also, please come up. I'd love to give you one as a gift. Father, we just bow our heads and close our eyes. And as we've studied the word today, we've come away realizing that it is reliable and true that we should be molding and living our lives according to what it says and not according to our own selfish desires. So today, we just surrender our hearts to you for the very first time or anew, declaring that Jesus, you are the son of the living God who came from heaven to earth to die a sinner's death on our behalf, that there's nothing righteous inside of us but you. And today we cry out and we say, Jesus, would you save us? Would you save us from ourselves? Would you save us from sin? Would you replace these hard feelings, these feelings of inadequacy, these feelings of, of guilt? Would you replace this guilt and shame with a love for you that could never be stopped, that could never be ceased? Father, we count on you and you alone, on your righteousness and the righteousness of no other. We are so grateful and so thankful that against all natural odds, you came that we might have life in you. 
Father, we love you dearly. We love your word. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word is God, Jesus. You are the word made flesh, and we love you. Let us dig deep in your word. Father, let us fall in love with you for the first time or all over again today. Build our faith. Inspire us. Guide us. Direct us. Forgive us. Help us to live out this Christian life. Holy Spirit, we welcome you into our lives as our teacher and our guide. Empower us today. We love you, Jesus. It is all about you in Jesus' name. And everybody says, amen. Put your hands together for the lady who's given her life to the Lord, and we're so excited for you. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May give you peace in Jesus' name. Live your lives to make a difference in the lives of others.